G'day YouTube and welcome to my channel 1MJ. 1MJ stands for One Man's Journey and this channel is going to be a documentation of one man's journey, that one man being me, and my journey into the world of cryptocurrencies. I thought I'd start with a little bit of a funny meme which I think describes cryptocurrencies fairly well. Who said crypto is stressful? I'm 21 and I feel great. <laughs> well, this is just a little bit of a joke. Uh, cryptocurrencies can actually be quite fun, but can be quite stressful as well. And if you've tuned into my channel, I'm guessing you know a little bit about cryptocurrencies already. And in further videos, I will go into you know, the beginnings of Bitcoin and how cryptocurrencies and things have come about. But today's video is just an introduction from myself uh, and a little bit of background on me and how I got into it. And I guess why I've decided to make a channel. So uh, if you haven't already worked out, I'm from Australia, the land down under, good old fashioned Aussie. Uh, I'm in my 40s. And I got into cryptocurrencies in sort of late 2017. I'd say around about sort of September, October. Now, how I came to get into cryptocurrencies was I'd heard about Bitcoin, I think back in maybe 2011, 2012. I saw something, I received an email or something that was telling me I was getting free Bitcoin. And I had no idea what Bitcoin was then, but that was the first time I kind of had an idea of, you know, just the name Bitcoin in itself. Didn't pay too much attention to it first, and I'm sure I wasn't getting any free Bitcoin anyway. But fast forward a few years later, I think it was about 2000, and it was either late 2016 or early 2017, uh, one of my friends uh, started to mention cryptocurrencies. And again, he spoke about Bitcoin in particular, and I, I remember hearing about it and him trying to explain to me that you know it was like money but a little bit different from money and i just i really couldn't wrap my head around it at the time and so i just kind of fobbed it off and he was like oh it's a great investment opportunity you've got to get into it silly me i was just like yeah yeah no nah, i just it all sounds weird you know it sounds like you know fake computer money basically is what i thought of it at the time so anyway we fast forward a couple of months again so i think it's now around about July, August 2017. And my friend tells me that he put $400 uh, into an ICO uh, and not long later it turned into 20, I think 21, 22,000 US dollars. So in Australia, that's worth a bit the US dollar. It's generally around about sort of 30 cents more for every dollar. So, you know, that would have taken it up around sort of the $25,000 mark, maybe even a little bit more. And that's where it really sparked my interest and he really got my attention. I just thought, you put $400 into something and it's now worth $25,000. And he was like, I swear to God, you know, you've got to have a look at this stuff. And anyway, that's where it all began for me. So he told me a little bit more about it. He sent me a snapshot of one of his wallets. I can't remember what wallet he had at the time. Uh, it might have been Exodus wallet or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. But you could see... Uh, the, the amount that the account was holding at the time and sure enough he had other cryptocurrencies in there as well that had done uh, a little bit better but he had something like oh, I think it was you know over 30,000 Australian dollars and again I think it was around about maybe 26,000 yeah 26,000 27,000 uh, US dollars and I couldn't believe it he wasn't really working here he was kind of you know yeah working on and off and so he only had a few dollars to invest here and there uh, and in that time, again, he turned a couple of hundred dollars, maybe a thousand or two thousand uh, dollars Australian into, yeah, over 30,000 Australian dollars. And I couldn't believe it. So that's uh, where it all started for me. So at first, I probably, I reckon I would have spent a month, at least a month, just going through, you know, cryptocurrencies, blockchain and specifically Bitcoin and just trying to work out exactly what it was. So by the time I purchased my first uh, bit of Bitcoin, I think it was September, October 2017. So this is when uh, cryptocurrencies was really in the heights uh, of the bull run that it went through in 2017. So I got in, uh, put a few hundred dollars in and turned a few hundred dollars into uh, not a whole lot, but I think I probably turned, I don't know, $800 Australian into I don't know, I might add two or $3,000, uh, nearly $4,000 in just a matter of sort of weeks, really. And when I say weeks, I, I literally mean like maybe three or four weeks. I'd 
yeah, kind of doubled and doubled my money again. I couldn't believe it. Uh, being a crypto uh, newbie at the time, I obviously thought this was just what it was, what it was about and cryptocurrencies were just going to keep soaring forever. Unfortunately, little did I know that uh, it was all going to end very soon because it was only around kind of December, January, so a month, two months later after uh, you know, the hysteria had kind of been and then it all, or at least that I'd seen the hysteria, it all started to subside and all I did was watch, you know, my sort of three, four thousand dollars Australian uh, just start to plummet and go down and yeah, that was... Uh, an interesting time again you know i saw you know i turned you know i ran about a thousand dollars into sort of four thousand dollars and then i watched that four thousand dollars turn into i think around about at the lowest point i think it was around about maybe 350 something dollars australian was all i had left uh yeah that was quite hard to watch and yeah obviously then we got to the uh the bear market and i really sort of uh was a little bit disillusioned with cryptocurrencies for a while there because i could i put this money in you know thankfully I, I hadn't put my life savings in or anything like that uh and then yeah i just obviously watched that investment go down and down and i sort of fell out of love with crypto for a little while i guess and then I remember uh, my friend, the same friend who got me into it, telling me that uh, he reckoned crypto had bottomed out uh, in sort of 2018. And I remember thinking, oh, it's going to go lower. And this is when crypto, uh, sorry, not crypto, this is when Bitcoin was, I don't know, around the sort of $4,000 mark. Uh, and sure enough, uh, he, he was right. It had bottomed out. Uh, it went a little bit lower. I think it got down to 3200 or something like that. And then ever since there, it slowly started to work its way back up. Now, I still didn't pay too much attention to cryptocurrencies too much uh, in 2018 at all. It was more around sort of 2019 that I started to pay a bit more attention to cryptocurrencies. I saw that Bitcoin had got on a bit of a run again. Uh, I think it got up to around about sort of near $14,000. We can actually jump over here. We'll have a look. I've got a chart up here. So, yeah, I got in somewhere around about, uh, must have been somewhere... A little bit. I think I was down here. So yeah, October, September, October, uh, two thousand and seventeen, and I watched it go all the way up to here to nearly twenty thousand dollars, and then I watched it just start to tumble all the way down. And it was probably around about, oh, I'd say sort of here in November, sort of last year, maybe a, a little bit before uh, September, October, that I really started to pay attention to cryptocurrencies uh, again, and particularly Bitcoin. Again, I watched it, you know, go from the 3,200 down here, get up to around about uh, 14,000, then it was starting to come down. But that was when I started to pay more attention to uh, charts and things like that and understand uh, how to read charts uh, and the way that, uh, you know, stocks uh not that i really like stocks but stocks and investments and things like that you know they go up and then they go down and then they go up and they go down and i really started to have a look at uh bitcoin's price history and they go you go back years and years and you can see things exactly like you're looking now it's pumped up and it's gone down and then it's pumped up and it's gone down and then eventually it has a breakout at some stage uh and anyway so i started to pay a whole lot more attention and it was sort of around about December last year yeah I think it'll be about December so it's around about sort of here so I remember it was around Christmas time I decided all right I need to get back into this market I still had the, the cryptocurrency as I got back from way over here uh, and they'd almost got back to their original prices again I was around about close to a thousand dollars that I had uh, in cryptocurrencies not quite a little bit less but I started to watch it go up uh, and yeah, anyway, I got back into a few different coins and again, then we had this big massive coronavirus dump that dropped down the back, down to the bottom here uh, and then it started to come back up. And something that I've found that's been er very interesting with this uh, chart is that Bitcoin has sat between about sort of 6,000 and 8,000-ish sort of dollars uh, in that time. And I've actually charted it out here. You can see that since back in October 2017, 
its average price has been between six thousand and sort of eight thousand dollars so it's been above it more than it's actually been below it so it was way above here then we saw it drop down below six thousand for a little while then it got back up into the range and then it's been above and using that sort of six thousand eight thousand range as support fell down a little bit here got back above and then we all know what happened here again the virus happened so it dropped down and as we can see drag it across here it started to move its way back up again now we've had a little bit of a sell-off over the last few days but that's bitcoin and that's cryptocurrencies in general they're highly uh, volatile and they can go up uh, quite substantially and go down substantially but what i've noticed again is if we kind of zoom uh, out a little bit is i believe that this is starting to coil and we're going to have a breakout at some stage i think uh, there's every chance that we might still drop down and see some uh, negative price moving again or well, i won't say negative but we could see some more downward action but i think at some stage we're going to break out to this and we're going to start to reach all-time highs because as i was saying before this is not the first time something like this has happened if we want to go back and have a look at uh bitcoin charts oh this one doesn't go back far enough oh no actually it will so we can see that bitcoin has pumped up here before Drop down, it's come up and pumped up and then dropped down, then it's come up and dropped down, come up a little bit, dropped down, and then it's just started to go on a bull run before. So this is not the first time that Bitcoin has done these kind of things, particularly here. This is when it had a big pump back in 2013, sort of 2014. So let's have a look. What was the date here? So November 2013, Bitcoin reached about $1,100 US. And then it started to have uh, a big drop off, exactly like kind of 2017, 2018. Dropped right off, fell down, came back up. Everyone thought it was going to happen again. It was going to pump back up. And then it had this long, big drop off here. And it just kept dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping until we got to about here. This is where it had reached its low. And then it had an accumulation phase, which is basically what we're going through now. And then it slowly but surely started to make its way back up. But what we can see is we go here. So this is about November 2013. It took until about over here, which is February 2017. So that's quite a few years. We got sort of three years, four years going on there before Bitcoin reached its uh, price again. And even then when it did, it pumped up a little bit and had another big sell-off again. But after that, well, we all know what happened. So again, this is that the beginning of that kind of run. Starts here, and then it starts to pump up and look at it go all the way up there, then it has a big sell-off again. Bit of an accumulation phase, pumps up. Has a bit of a sell-off again, pumps up, has a bit of a sell-off. Well, that was a big sell-off actually, one of the biggest ever. And it's starting to pump, a gut, pump, pump back up again, sorry, excuse me. And I think we might even see another bit of a sell-off coming here before eventually we're going to break out of this zone that we can sort of see here again. This is that downward sort of trend we have at the moment. But while the highs are getting lower... The lows are getting higher and that's what's really important. So it's all starting to coil up in here. It's moving up, down, up, down until we kind of get to a point where somewhere in here it's going to break out. Now it could possibly break low. Who knows? I don't believe that. I think it's going to break high and it's going to be something much the same back here where it broke up, sold off a bit, came down and then started to go parabolic. And if you know something about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and that, Bitcoin had its halving not long ago, uh, and if it follows uh, charts that it's done before, there's every chance it's going to go on another sort of bull run very, very shortly. So yeah, that's the kind of things I'm looking at, and that's how I got into cryptocurrencies. Uh, again, I got in sort of back here, I made a bit of money, but then I watched it all just kind of sell off and got a bit disheartened with it and forgot about it for a while. And again, it was kind of, yeah, last year, somewhere around about sort of October, November-ish, I started to really pay attention to it again. I saw it got higher uh, back in 2019. And then I was like, I've got to pay more attention. And yeah, obviously 
started to pay a lot more attention. Uh, I did put some money in kind of, yeah, earlier in the year, and then unfortunately I watched that big sell-off, and that kind of hurt a little bit. But I've been putting uh, more funds into it since sort of down around about here. It's a little bit under the $6,000 mark. Uh, and yeah, so far things are doing not too bad since there, but we'll have to wait and see. But what I want to do is quickly go over to CoinGecko. Let's refresh, make sure this is up to date, and we'll see where everything is at the moment. So 9,500. So we're kind of ranging here, and as I said, uh, there's every chance we're probably going to have a bit of a sell-off. But really, the level I'm looking for is that it doesn't break below $6,000. If it stays above $6,000, again, I think we'll kind of try trade sideways for quite some time. Could even be a number of months, but I think eventually we're going to break out to the upside. But who knows? This is cryptocurrencies. It could go either way. But I'll just show you some of the things that I've invested in. I've got about 40% of my... Uh, investment into Bitcoin. I've got about 25% of my investment into Ethereum. I've got about 7% of my investment into XRP. And then after that, we start to go down to about sort of 2%. So we've got about 2% in Litecoin, 1% in Cardano, 1% in Binance Coin, about 2% in Chainlink, very small amount in Stellar. And then I've got a whole stack of other coins. But Things that I have really uh, liked and kind of put a bit into, again, they're only about 1% or 2%, but I've done a number of uh, 1% or 2% investments into them, uh, is the whole DeFi uh, space. Uh, I love DeFi. I, I think that is going to be the future of cryptocurrencies. Uh, and things that I've got into are coins like Carva. I've got into Synthetics uh, Network. Uh, Aave, which is the Lend token, and all those sort of things. I'm going to have a look into Loopring. That's seeming pretty uh, interesting. The Ren project. I've got a few, uh, a few of them as well. And that's really where I'm going to focus on. I think DeFi is where it's going to be at. We had the big 2017, 2018 kind of boom, and that was the ICO boom. You know, everyone was getting in, and ICOs were the flavor of the month. But I think, uh, not so much flavor of the month, but flavor of that, you know, kind of boom period. I think DeFi is where it's going to be at from here on in. And I think getting in now would be a great time to get into uh, cryptocurrencies because when the next bull wave, uh, bull run comes, I think there's going to be huge gains to be made. Uh, and that's pretty much my story. But I do want to finish off by saying uh, anything that I put in my blogs, it's not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. As I said, you know, I watched $1,000 turn into $4,000 and then I watched it turn into $350. I am no expert in cryptocurrencies by any means, but I do uh, have some knowledge and have been around for a little while and have a bit of an understanding. And this channel it is not financial advice or an investment advice. It's just a documentation of my journey through the crypto world. And you can have a look and see uh, what I've done and what's worked for me and what hasn't worked for me and then go out and do your own research uh, and decide whether cryptocurrencies uh, are for you. Anyway, this is just uh, my first video. So hopefully you liked it. Uh, stay safe, everyone. Uh, crypto can be a, a volatile world, as we know. Be kind to one another. And I'll see you next time.